Welcome, and today we're going to look at one of my favorite subjects. Peru, a good place to start any video. Though not the topic of this video, I did want to introduce those who weren't familiar with this topic to the Nazca lands. And what we see here are massive, sometimes called geoglyphs, seen better from the air and attributed to having been built in 500 BC. A very strange anomaly and some of these animal figures spanning for several miles in length. And how could such a thing be engineered from the ground in 500 BC? Now these are depressions in the ground and how could they survive? Now this desert is very dry, but still. And today what we're going to focus on are these lions, which in my opinion are even more impressive than these animal figurines. And these lions often run for hundreds of miles and seeming to span and possibly connect all throughout our realm. Due to technical difficulties with my computer, let's just jump right into Wyoming. And where is this going to lead today, this Wild West expedition? I was researching historic buildings and we come across these airfield strips. And here a little look at one of those. And perhaps one of these airfield strips are even more impressive than any building. The amount of precise surveying equipment and heavy machinery to move, level, and grade earth perfectly to where you could land an airplane or drive a vehicle at a high speed or even facilitate the travel of a horse and buggy. These airfield strips are in actuality found and repurposed. And let me give you a little look at this article. Abandoned and little known airfields in Wyoming, revised in May of this year. And here we see these, in this case, what they're telling us is an abandoned airstrip, always having this type of shape as if one strip isn't enough or two in a small rural community in 1952. Again to be sure in 1952 we have a population of about 10,000 people and here since we're dealing with Rock Springs I found an old picture of the original Rock Springs Airport and here we also get a look at their high-tech equipment and this is as good as it gets in this time period. And this is 1920. And here they're telling us the construction of this airport started in August and was finished in September of 1920. One month, one month, apparently this equipment was much better than anything we have today. Don't be fooled. Pumping out airports in one month is this realistic or was this already here and we'll have a look at some great photos coming up here but right now I'm just scratching the surface and just giving you a little feel of what a 1920s Wyoming town of 10,000 people might be doing here ten years later they decided to build a hangar at the airport equipped with waiting rooms, offices, and a radio station. Why not? And very interesting. Here not far away we have another airport in Peru, Wyoming. And again, always having this shape. Seems like a pretty bad idea for laying out an airport. But this is how they come. 
This is what we find all over the desert, all throughout this realm. I even have one in my small town, and it was turned into an airport. And the way you can tell is a very small town like mine will actually just pave one little section and the rest will remain. There's just no resources to pave them all or no reason. And before moving on, I just wanted to give thanks and credit to the New Earth Channel who brought this kind of information into my reality well over two or three years ago. And a lot of this information, and this includes the subject of past civilizations, the thousand years of missing time in our history, the mud flood, and even the melting of buildings that has recently become a popular subject in our small community and the subject of one of my first videos. I've always found Sylvia's work to be very important and along with her, Wise Up and Conspiracy R Us, all personal inspirations inspiring me to create a channel and share this information and hopefully expand on it. I like to think of this research as a group effort, sharing ideas and building upon them. I also want to give a shout out to Martin Liedke and Philip Druzinen, and of course the X channel Mud Flood, who was also very inspirational. I believe his videos are still to be found on various channels here and there. But enough said, let's look at some ancient grids. And this is a comment that was just shared with me by Alan Spence, directing us to StolenHistory.org, a fascinating site. And this particular thread dealing with these ancient grids that I so very love. And there is no end to what can be seen proving a past civilization these are some of the oldest earthworks and infrastructure so old oftentimes they are not even given any credit or explanation the reshaping of coastlines canal systems intricate ports grids in some cases for hundreds of miles with no explanation lines cutting through rugged terrain with changing elevation with a perfection that would be very difficult to replicate today and oftentimes these lines are not affected by overgrowth of brush they somehow maintain their visibility and more often than not their purpose is completely not understood so this thread starts out with this really interesting book growing artificial societies just fascinating that such a book even exists and i look forward to having a look at this here is the author and here let's just jump into some grid patterns this is a perfect example and if these are anywhere near developed areas with a population they quickly become roads and farms and various uses and serve as an excellent foundation for development but what makes no sense is when they're in the middle of nowhere oftentimes one of this nature would become an airport very convenient repurposing if needed and this particular section is in Canada and here taking a little jump to someone's personal Flickr album, we can have a look at a nice showcase of some of these grids. And this is very exciting. I do love a showcase. Nice and organized. And here we'll start out with Alaska. An excellent example. At a first glance, looking like a city. And again, perfect foundations. Here's an excellent one. Almost having a crop circle feel, but even more fascinating. Something less temporary. And even here, 
This is almost in another category, not so grid-like, but clearly a purpose. And a little closer look, and like I was saying, changing the vegetation. Almost leaving perhaps a frequency behind that acts as a natural herbicide, allowing for the definition of these lines to remain. Very fascinating. And here are some other little offshoot patterns. As if our minds aren't blown enough. A little close up here. And yes, another underlying pattern that I hadn't initially noticed. And these are in Alaska. Middle of nowhere. Some of the greatest ones have simply been turned into military bases. But you can only have so many military bases. And so many farms. And if these are found near water, we end up with canal type systems. And here again, a grid with some other kind of imprint as well. And here many times we do see this. Along a line, a water reservoir. And this is very, very typical when doing this research. Here again, I'll look at that. And this one is very interesting. Really at a loss of words when examining these. Coming from both a alternative and I'm sure a mainstream perspective. Very difficult to understand what we may be seeing here. And I would love to hear your comments. Some of the strangest of my research. Here again, seeming very purposeful and intentional and very beautiful. Here a little closer. And what purpose? Could this be a terraforming? And as we can see, what the author of this showcase has titled this, The Search for Sleeping Giants. Very appropriate. For an average human, such a feat would most probably be impossible. Especially, like I said, to keep the vegetation from either not growing or growing in the appropriated lines. And here's one in Mexico. In one of the first videos I ever made on this subject, I was showing grids on the shores of the Salt Lake in Utah. And a lot of people told me these were salt farms. And again, very easy to explain away if they're in a close proximity to civilization. But in cases like this, unused, and yet clearly looking like the remains of a past civilization. This may have been some industrial site, and in a past reset, has been washed clean, and all we see is an imprint. Let's have a little look at Iraq some pictures out in the desert really showing up nicely in the desert and of course some of the first pictures I ever saw depicting these ancient lines or not so ancient were in Peru many 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 years ago hearing discussions on late night talk radio about the massive spider and hummingbird that could be seen from above and it's as if whoever made all of these other works had just been doodling out in Peru and perhaps these are just abstract doodles but I don't think so I think there is a purpose what people in what time period unclear but what is certain is these are the foundation of our realm. All of our cities and major 
feats of architecture lay on these lines and many times being very organized and seeming like circuitry and in cases like this uncertain what is clear is these are not natural and again we are in Iraq no paved roads very little signs of modern civilization and we do often see a modern road and the modern roads being not as straight and perfectly engineered as the older ones and this is really fascinating with these little divots along the road and signs of prior civilization now this is a great example these look like perhaps some modern vehicle tracks all crazy we can clearly differentiate the old from the new here a little close-up and all of this is in Iraq a rather large showcase I believe there was a hundred and fifty photos in this one alone and this is one of the more beautiful ones I've ever seen some sort of spiral and really not seeming to be any signs of civilization and even here in this little lagoon much work has been taken into shaping this and all of the coastline seeming artificial as if every detail in this realm was planned and laid out long before we arrived we being naive to this wonder and look at this this is probably massive absolutely amazing and it would be pointless to speculate on its purpose but clearly having a purpose here being the site of a great city here is a clear footprint of civilization and here was their road here was probably their train and now nothing out in the middle of nowhere here a little closer look if it wasn't clear enough absolutely fascinating and how massive was this towering structure in which we're only seeing the footprint of here a little look at this track I would love to teleport here immediately have a look absolutely amazed and here again seeming to be the shadows for some columns really mind-blowing I wish we had some Google Earth coordinates nothing it seems Wow and I think before my head explodes I'll take a pause one more little look I saw this down here and now if this was in America for example in the United States this would quickly become a military base but out here in the desert of Iraq much has been preserved and it does seem like it has become something some kind of industrial site easy repurposing for industrial applications and for the masses bringing some sort of closure to the mystery and here's a nice one in Egypt and I shared this one once somebody sent me a link to the image and I never was able to find it on Google Earth and very fascinating that I should be reunited and really we have to consider the famous Burning Man event really resembling something like this they turning it into a temporary city for a week or two very beautiful and here are some interesting ones in Idaho not too far from me very strange seeming like some identifying markers 
perhaps some language, and these squiggly lines with what appear to have water in them. Very fascinating. Idaho, typically a pretty dry state, very beautiful state. And here we go. Something that seems very much like lettering. And again, a very nice showcase. And I thank you, creator of this. Very nice organizing of these anomalies. And down here at the end we see another 1200 plus photos that need sorting and are titled as such. Oh, how we lose track of time when we're enjoying ourselves. But for this week, I think that's it. I thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all your kind support. Do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.